So it's that time again, a new retro relevant product has arrived and I suppose I'd best take a look at it. As you already know it's the C64 Mini. Apparently I pre-ordered one from Amazon back in October, so as it's here, why the hell not? Right, where do we start with these? Ah yes of course, the unboxing. Here's the box, quite pleasing actually, as it's the same shape as the original packaging, just smaller. 64 games included, here's some of the better ones shown on the back. A Peggy 7 rating which is quite funny given we're dabbling with Commodore 64 software here, but apparently there's violence that a 6 year old just wouldn't be able to handle within. This is all actually a very nice package, we've got an inner box which looks really nice and opening that reveals the perfectly laid out kit. Usually I couldn't give a crap about unboxing something, but this was a genuinely nice experience. Anyway, let's get all this out. Here's the little weenie C64, the rather hefty joystick in comparison, some leads underneath and the manual, again in the original style. Apparently this is a 50% scale replica, which I'll just take their word on. Unfortunately the mini keyboard doesn't work, which is a shame, that would have been a nice touch regardless of the fact it would be unusable. Maybe they could have just made the run stop key work. But it doesn't matter, it's a product made for a price, sacrifices are part of the course. Another sacrifice being the lack of graphical characters on the key front, but like I said, it's not usable, it doesn't matter, it still looks the part. But here's the question I have, why do we even have a Mini? When this project started on Indiegogo as the 64, the idea was for a computer version with proper keys and a handheld version. Somewhere along the line, the C was added to the name and a Mini version popped out. Now there was a time when I was miffed at all these minis popping out of crevices, but I've slowly become accustomed to them, and I see them for their worth. Most people can't be asked to haul out a full sized computer every time they want some retro gaming fun, and so popping a mini console in the lounge solves that issue, whilst offering just enough reference to the original aesthetic to transport you back to the 80s. So I understand why Retro Games Limited, not to be confused with Retro Computers Limited, although it has ties with Chris Smith and Paul Andrews who were originally behind the ZX Vega, but I can understand why they opted to make a mini and I actually quite like it, so far anyway. Reportedly the larger versions will follow this year for the backers who wanted one. Not sure about the handhelds however. So here's the joystick which plugs into one of the two USB ports on the Mini. Now I don't know about you but the moment I saw this stick I thought, wait a minute, this looks the same as the C64 DTV joystick released in 2004 which was essentially a full C64 on a chip in a joystick. So maybe this C64 Mini is really a shell with a few connectors, and this whole thing is just based around that joystick. So rather than plugging it in, the first thing I did was tear it apart. Like the C64 DTV, this stick is modelled around an elevated competition pro. It's a bit more waggly and lacks the satisfaction of the original, you won't find any micro switches here, but the buttons feel nice. Anyway, it turns out that internally the joystick is actually very sparse, apart from a couple of weights and the switchboard, which means the guts are indeed in the C64 Mini case. A few screws here and there and there we go, a dinky board wedged in the corner along with this wire, which actually turned out to be a reset slash firmware flashing button craftily hidden under the bottom sticker, quite a nice place to put it really. The main bulk of the board itself is taken up with the dual core A20, it's a 1GHz Cortex A7 ARM processor, which works with the Mali 400 MP2 dual core GPU to run its menu system and emulate the C64 functionality from a stripped down Linux installation as far as I'm aware at least. So it's not an ASIC based simulation like the C64 DTV, but as long as it does the job it doesn't really matter. 
actually, this setup makes it pretty hackable, so I'm sure we'll see many interesting homebrew projects to come. Anyway, now we know the truth, it's best to put all this back together. Really, you could do without this part entirely and put everything in the joystick, just like the C64 DTV really, but I think the aesthetic is really crucial to a lot of people. Plus, it gives a nice base station to plug two joysticks in if you've got some friends, or even swap the joystick for a controller of your choice, although compatibility is reportedly a bit flaky at this point. Actually, talking about aesthetic, the paint job on these keys is a little thin on the ground, literally. During the course of reassembly, a fair bit seemed to have scraped off onto my table. You can see from the corner keys where the paint has been worn off, leaving the white plastic exposed. Anyway, most people won't be sliding theirs about upside down on a desk, but it does indicate that over time those keys will deteriorate, a somewhat more serious issue than the yellowing of the original machines. Anyway, I digress, let's stop being a miserable bastard and have some fun. You know how to plug a console in, so I'm not showing you that. Like most of these minis, power is provided by USB, so hopefully your TV has a spare one. The joystick can plug into either USB socket 1 or 2, and then you're ready to go. Here you get a conveyor belt of titles, along with screenshots and a blurb for the highlighted selection. Among those titles is C64 Basic. If you fancy dabbling in some basic, then you can use the virtual keyboard to type. But you'd have to be out of your goddamn mind. Waggling that wobbly stick about and picking characters? No, you're much better off plugging a USB keyboard in like this beauty. The problem then is that the C64 keys aren't always mapped to where you might expect, but still you can tap away and create wondrous programs if you so desire. When you're bored of that, you can work through the catalogue of built-in games. Now there are some classics here, titles worthy of both your time and the memory they consume on this device. There are also some lesser games, but overall it's not a bad selection. Oh, and thankfully you can turn that blooming music off. It might sound nice to start with, but trust me, two hours in and it starts to grate. So, notable titles include Boulder Dash, Impossible Mission, Highway Encounter, Paradroid, School Days, Speedball 2, Temple of Apshai, C64 Basic, C64 Basic, you get the idea. Now, given the C64 Mini has far more games than the SNES Mini, you'd think its £65 price tag was stupendous value for money. But then, C64 games aren't always the epic titles that you'd find on cartridge platforms. Still, there are options, like changing the screen mode to keep you happy, as demonstrated with my particular favourite from this library, Creatures. God damn, this game is hard. Each game has four save slots, which saves the entire memory state of the machine, and this works both within games and basic, allowing you to save programs you've typed out. You can even load your own games via USB, but this isn't as streamlined as you might hope. Firstly, we have to load programs through BASIC. Secondly, you can only load one disk image onto your USB stick at a time. Now, using programs like Dermaster, you can put several games onto one image, space allowing, enabling you to hold several games on one stick. But it's still extremely clunky. Multi-disk games are even more of a problem. At least there is functionality to load external ROMs, however, out of a box. But if you're having to mess about to this extent, you start thinking, well, I might as well have set up a Raspberry Pi emulator. Retro Games Limited say this will be improved on later firmware releases, along with other features. But that doesn't help day one Boris, who doesn't know how to update firmware and just wants an easy to use out of the box experience. 
The only saving grace is that once you've loaded an external game, you can save its state to the mini's memory, and then just reload the game from that memory position. This way you don't even need the USB, but it does limit you to four save slots found under the basic interpreter. Ok, what about two player? This thing is perfect for some multiplayer lounge action. Well, you can apparently plug another joystick into the second USB, but I don't have a suitable controller. I thought I'd try it with a USB keyboard, however for the built in games this wasn't really successful. Titles like Pit Stop 2 seemed to want a second joystick or nothing, whilst California and Summer Games just kept adding more and more players with no apparent way to limit proceedings. Maybe that's just me being stupid, but the point is it's not intuitive. In fact, given the number of buttons on the joystick, it's disappointing that you have to fall back to the keyboard on some titles at all, especially if you've only got the bloody virtual keyboard. I used to, so, so I have to play, I have to do it with the joystick. Yeah. Look at the chest, look at the it, chest. Unless, did you configure the keys? The keys? No, it didn't let me do that. It's fine, but the implementation of some games just feels a bit off the shelf. Another separate point is it would be useful if there was an indicator on the menu screen as to which games are multiplayer in the first place. Going back to the joystick, the cord isn't the longest, so if you're sitting on the sofa this might cause some limitations, but you can use your own pads, so a decent wireless one may solve this issue if you have one which is compatible. And that's the main issue for me, the quality of the product. Little things like incompatibility with certain joysticks and USB sticks can likely be fixed through firmware updates, but there are other issues here and there which make me doubt this thing. This ranges from display issues in games, to crashing, and even to this horrific sound the device makes upon booting. I can't see these lasting 30 plus years like the original hardware has. This was supposed to be fun wasn't it? I mean look, it, it is fun. The thing is fun, it can be fun, it will be fun as long as you let it be fun. I do like it, but the problem with all these computer minis is the lack of keyboard. And I think the slightly smaller than the original but larger than this with a working keyboard version might be more up my street. Still, at least I can plug my C64 mini joystick into my PC and play some Spectrum games with it. Over horror. Okay, thanks for watching my C64 mini review. You can watch more, you can subscribe, you can contribute to my Patreon if you'd like to support my channel. In any case, thank you for watching and have a great evening.